days, as they were called previously in corsets, were around uh, for centuries beforehand. But the Victorians really uh, took to it, partly because of the kind of scientific discoveries and the technological advancements they were making. So they were working with different ways of, of steel reinforcements, and um, they invented this steel busk here, which allowed the women to take the corsets on and off themselves and invented uh, metal eyelets and a form of backlacing the corset which allowed uh, women to tighten the corsets themselves. And you'd wear it in every age and uh, every class. And it would have been considered shocking if you did not wear a corset. Throughout the 19th century, the shape was changing as much as through the 20th century, really. So it started off as a very tubular shape. And then in the 1850s, the shape was quite a pronounced hourglass. So this corset is very late, but um, some of the earlier corsets would really kind of kick out at the hip. There was a massive, massive shift from Victorian to Edwardian. They introduced the straight busk, which, and the busk is this front bit here. And they introduced it ostensibly so as not to put pressure on the internal organs. Actually, what it ended up doing was pressing into the groin and causing such discomfort, it made the pelvis arch backwards and the bust to basically be thrust forward. So you had this very, very pronounced S shape. It was trying to be more comfortable. It's probably much more uncomfortable and, and bad for posture and your back and your figure generally than any of the Victorian courses. In terms of body shape throughout the 20th century, you get a few flash points. Um, and also you get young people after the First World War really rebelling against the previous generation that, that had sent them all off to war and they wanted to look completely different from this matronly figure. So you have this very androgynous kind of flapper shape and that was really created with a combination of girdles and if you uh, were unfashionable enough to have um, a big chest you would flatten that down with um, a bra called a bando which would basically just to flatten, flatten your boobs. After the Second World War, you see the resurgence of femininity after the austerity. You get this style, which is much more feminine. It's part of Dior's new look, which was all about uh, cinched in waists and big skirts. This is, this is got power net, so it's actually doing uh, quite a strong job of compressing the body without whale bones. So it's the, the, the 1950s is the introduction of a lot of man-made fibres. So this is doing the job of that Victorian corset, just in a different and more comfortable way. In the 1950s, particularly the mid-1950s, um, three out of every four women were wearing falsies, which are essentially uh, foam cones at the front um, of the cup. And basically that's to create that really kind of bullet bra shape, that really pointy conical shape that you see in uh, old films. And this is, these are very hard cones here, but you did get kind of versions of them which were little inflatable um, falsies or ones that you would even fill with water. But I think they were a bit of a commercial disaster. Well, in the 1960s, you get a very different kind of aesthetic. For a start, um, the introduction of certain fabrics helps. So Lycra had been introduced in 1959 um, commercially and was incredibly successful because essentially it's highly tensile, so it turns back to its former shape. It, it pulls you in, it compresses the figure, and it does it all without clasps and hoop, hooks. Because teenagers were rebelling against corsetry as something that was old and old fashioned and perhaps chauvinistic, um, a lot of designers tried to create something new that might perhaps appeal to them. So instead of corsets, you start to see bodysuits being advertised. Here is a Mary Quant body, um, and obviously Mary Quant was a very fashionable name in the 1960s, so this would have been quite um, desirable. Um, it's got a, a lycra panel here to reinforce your tummy, um, and moreover it can be worn under mini skirts or um, under tight dresses. It can even be worn with jeans. Fashionable people are trying to have a really natural body shape. Almost in terms of the way the story develops, uh, you know, the, the, the introduction of separate bra and knicker sets in the 1960s is kind of, you know, it's kind of the end really of the, this kind of, um, you know, foundation wear development. Foundation wear is, is not really supposed to be seductive until you get to 
a very contemporary era where you have this kind of retro, vintage aesthetic where you're wearing kind of agent provocateur or fairy goth mother kind of corsets, that whole burlesque aspect. And I suppose corsetry and all of these aesthetics like the girdle and all of these kind of um, things that were so uh, such a normal part of women's dressing routine. They fell very much out of favour and for a few decades were not fashionable at all. But I think then in the 80s and into the 90s were really reclaimed and seen by designers like Vivian Westwood as something actually quite empowering. So instead of being kind of hyper feminine, they were actually kind of hyper assertive. It's, it's difficult to trace uh, the fashionable body shape now through underwear, um, partly because underwear doesn't really do that job anymore. Now you're pretty much expected to, you know, to be that shape. You're supposed to just kind of have that.